the entire file is something that is in your control delete this one approve and let's come back to our pipeline right now once the merge is done and look at the file now you have put an entire stage out here called development and all these things out here okay and i have a feeling that this is going to fail let's go into my file there's one more thing that i need to do go to the pipeline say edit let me check this out stages pool image and etc there's one more thing that i need to mention and where is that okay let's see stage pool and etc job deployment and yes in here you need to mention something called as an environment this is important especially when you're doing a deployment job so this is under the deployment i'll say this is a dev environment out here you can take any name and i'll also explain what is the significance of having something called as an environment out here so let me save this out and then again need to let's say come via a, fee, a pull request out here feature environment missed adding environment to the file I added something called as an environment under the display name. I'll save this out and let me go ahead and look at the pull request. So I just went ahead and added something called environment here. And these are a couple of white spaces that you know, came in. Okay, with that, let me add a work item. Approve this out and now look at the pipeline. So approving the pull request and now the pull request is being watched. And now I have my file in place with all these things out here. And I also have the environment and etc. So now I keep kind of keep a track of all my history. Now let's go ahead into the ML build. Let's run the pipeline once again. And let's check this out. Now, if you see, I have two different things that are coming up right now. One is a build stage. The other is a development stage. This is something that I said, okay, fine, please go ahead, use something known as a development out here. This is going to do, this is going to do its job. Is this going to go ahead and uh, let's say do a .NET build, .NET restore and etc. And once this is done, it will quickly move into something known as the development job out here into the development stage out here as such. So let's wait for this one. It's going to do a restore, build, publish, copy the SQL files, copy the ARM templates, do the publish artifacts. Once it's done, it's going to move into the deployment. So now it's a CI CD pipeline and I don't even use the release service right now. YAML kind of, if you're going through the YAML route, you, you never will have to, let's say, use something known as the release service out here as such. It's all built in under this particular pipeline section, wherein you have your deployment in the form of a stages. And now if you go into development out here, it's moved already into that particular stage called as development. And I'll just wait for this one to let's say go ahead, pick up the agent. And now it's saying initialize job and all these things out. So let's wait. So now it's going at creating the infrastructure using that particular YAML out here. And let's see how it works out right now. So it's doing the build artifact. So it's just going ahead, downloading this out inside this particular folder. It just downloaded out all these things out. And then using those folders, I'm creating the infrastructure. I have passed a lot of things to the infrastructure out here. So now it's telling, it's trying to validate the template. It's saying, okay, fine, template is validated and all that stuff. Let's go to the, uh, let's say Azure portal. And now it's created the dev RG inside which it's deploying my ARM template. The way it deploys the template all remains the same, but the way it's running the pipeline now varies. This is now a different stage altogether called development inside which it's now running all these things. Again, it will take some time to go ahead and let's say deploy this out out here as such. Yes, any questions you tell you or anyone, any questions tell you that I can take. 
me close this yes any questions still here that i can take it will take around two or three minutes of time to go ahead and run this pipeline out so any questions till then anyone any questions still here anyone who's not following anyone who needs a re-explanation please let me know i'll again go through that particular file out there anyone any questions again uh, one thing guys is that now down the lane five or six years later you might not have the classic builds at all a lot of let's say uh, devops tools have moved into some kind of a version controlling for example if you look at jenkins you have something called as a jenkins file wherein you go and mention all your build and etc if you look at git git also supports something like yaml so azure devops is also moving that direction and that's the reason if you look at the documentation they are heavily stressing on yaml if you go to classic there is not much of documentation that they give you so it's slowly moving towards let's say that particular infra or that particular let's say syntaxing called yaml out here so we will have to be very let's say on toes to let's say learn this out i would i would say if you are moving into a new project in all likely you are going to use yaml out here for let's say the ci cd part as, as such out there so it's better you learn yaml right away to understand how the syntax kind of follows and it's a build and release architecture that companies would uh, let's say demand you to let's say go ahead and build it using the yaml file out here as such yes any questions still here anyone any questions still here hi kiran what is what is the advantage of using yaml mm, you will have to is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah here we are writing the code this is a, a little bit tricky now with uh, mm. a classic okay so again that's what i was telling you is that i have explained what is the advantage of yaml twice earlier so you will have to look again look at the class yesterday's and today's to understand what are the advantages of yaml and in the mm -hmm. next class you will have to tell me what is the advantage mm -hmm. of yaml versus a classic okay yeah, we, we don't have any reference file uh, build pipeline or how to how to write right uh again if you say you do not have a reference pipeline then again that would be a wrong statement you can have a classic from a classic you can export the yaml definition do you know how to export the yaml from a classic pipeline yeah so you have a reference file okay. simply, simply have a reference file in there so what are the advantages of yaml you will have to tell me right now so i'm not going to repeat it once again you will have to tell me what are the advantages of yaml by going through this class Yes, any more questions here, guys? Hi, sir. Good, please. Sir, can you please explain the uh, release release uh, release stage pipeline like sure. I, sure, we'll go into once this is done. Now, almost is done out here right now. So let's go here, get our pipeline, and again analyze this out. Take the entire file. Let's go to our VS Code. This is in, let's see. So this is the first stage build where which is producing you the artifacts out here. And in the release, I said, what is the name of the stage? Just like I did in the build. I said, this is build, this is development. I said, then I said, what is the pool? VM image windows latest. And I mentioned what is the variables? I said, yes, this is the variable group. And this is a little tricky part wherein I said jobs and instead of do instead of doing something called as a job in the build pipeline, which refers simply to the build, I'm saying the job here is a deployment. I'm giving it a display name optional in nature. This is important. Whenever you do a deployment job, you'll have to mention what is the environment. So I'm seeing environment. I'll also show you how the environment actually looks like and what are the advantages of having something called environment out here. 
then here I said the strategy. This is one additional step that I put in. I said, please run this pipeline once and I want you to deploy this out. There are multiple strategies like canary and rolling, but most likely you'd be using something like run once out here. Then I'm telling, okay, fine, please deploy this out. And then finally I came with the steps in the steps. Very firstly, I said, okay, fine, do not download anything. I will give you what to download. And I put a download build artifact tasks here where I said, please download all the artifacts into the system dot artifacts directly out here. And after that, my ARM template deployment and whenever I'm doing a template deployment and etc. I am calling that particular system dot artifact directory and drop SQL dot JSON drop dot zip file whenever I'm deploying the ARM, sorry, whenever I'm pushing, let's say the app service deployment and the same file again dot SQL out here as such. Yes, this was the entire, let's say pipeline in the form of a release or in the form of a stage out here. I mentioned everything as deploy uh, as a development stage as such out there. So one thing I additionally added is the environment and is the strategy. These are the two things basically that you have to let's say remember when you move into something known as a deployment job out here as such. Is that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, any more questions here, guys? Okay, now one more thing that I just want to emphasize on is that if you go to a release pipeline, right? Let's go to the release pipeline out here. See, there was something called as pre-deployment approvals. I could just go ahead and give someone as a pre-deployment approval because before I want to deploy it out, I want to seek some approvals out here. I want to do the same thing with classic. And that's the reason Azure gives you or Azure DevOps gives you something called as an environment. And here I put in an environment called dev. What this does is this. Let's go into the pipeline service. There's something called environments. And here I now have an environment that got created called dev. And this particular job kind of ran, which is nothing but development, wherein it's again pointing to the same pipeline. So whenever you mention the name of the environment, Azure DevOps kind of creates something called as an environment for you. What you can do with this is that you can click on these three, uh, let's say, uh, dots out here, say approvals and checks, and you can add something called as an approval before the stage begins. So now I'll say this is classes Azure DevOps at the gmail.com, this is the approval, and instructions for the approval. Check the artifacts or something like this. Let's see, great. So now this acts like a pre deployment approval. Azure DevOps YAML pipelines do not support a post deployment approval out here. So it now acts like a pre deployment approval before you go ahead and run this pipeline. So if I run this pipeline right now, again, it goes through the build. And before it comes to the development, it will ask me for an approval out here telling that you know what, uh, you will have to approve this before you can go ahead and deploy this out. And until and unless someone approves this out, your pipeline won't start at all. So environment kind of gives you a control to add some checks and balances. So now if you look at this one, go to environment section. And once you go into the environment section, this is what I did. So environment section, in the environment section, I said, okay, fine, this is the environment dev. Again, I didn't create an environment. I didn't say what is the environment and etc. My pipeline created the environment out there. My pipeline itself created the environment out there for me. So I'll say security, not security, sorry. I'm going to the environment, I'll say approvals and checks. And then I added the approval call, uh, you know, put someone as an approver and I went ahead and I did the same thing out here. So that's the advantage of having something known as the environment. And you have to mention the environment if you do a deployment job. If you do a build job, you don't have to even you know touch the section called as environment out there but if you do a deployment job this is something which will come into picture and this will help you mention what is the pre-deployment approval condition out there as such so now if you see this is waiting waiting for my review i can review this out i can approve this out out here as such and once approved it will now go into the development 
do the same thing out here for you as such out there. Yes, any questions till here? So now it is the build, it is the development. I also need a QA staging production. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna again write all these things. I'll just copy the entire thing, which is the development stage. And just collapse this out. Put my cursor under this one. Collapse the entire stage. I'll re-add this once again. And now rebrand this as QA. Group is now, let's say, let's look at our libraries. It's a QA group, but here, let's see if I have the SQL DB name. I don't think I have the SQL database name out here. So I'll say SQL DB name. It's a demo DB. So now I have the QA stage. And I'll say the group name is QA. Environment name is QA. Scroll down. Nothing else that I'll change. It's just the QA out here. If I want a staging environment, I'll again come back. And say, I'll just copy the entire, let's say, uh, development stage in which I just copied that out. I'll say this is a staging. Group name is stage. I don't have that group. I can create one. I'll say this is stage. Stage. And the rest is all fine. I'm just going in and taking the same thing. And finally, if you want a production. Just again, take this out under the stage. Add something called as a production. So this is production prod. So this is prod. So this is production. Let's say this is production. And save this out. And before I run my pipeline, I would need those libraries. So I'll just go ahead, clone this out. I'll say this is stage. My password in here. As a secret. But again, if you do not need the passwords here, you can pull it from a key vault. Clone this out. I'll say this is production. Again, give my password. And I'll save this out here. So now I have those libraries, which is development, staging, QA, and production. That is my, that is, I mean, this is being referred by my, let's say, the pipeline out here. And there are multiple stages. Build, development, QA, staging, and production. I'll save this out. Again, come right from a feature branch. Added stages. I'll start a pull request as and when I create this out. Let's go into the pull request out here. Let's say work item link this out. Auto complete delete the feature branch. Approve this out here. Once approved, it's merging the pull request right now. Once merged, let's go into let's say the pipeline out here and run this out once again. Now I have these stages that you see out here right now, which is the entire CI CD definition, which is build, development, QA, staging, and production. It moves sequentially from development to QA, QA to let's say staging, staging to let's say production out here as such. This is what I have done with the entire pipeline definition out there as such out here. Yes, any questions clear? Anyone, any questions still here? Again, uh, yes, good, has a question. 
Do you have a question? Yes. Hello. Can you please type it in. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, now you're good. Go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry, Kiran. Actually, uh, uh, we are. We are placing the artifacts in under uh, artifact staging directory. That is drop folder. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Everybody is placing that uh, drop folder only. Mm -hmm. So do we can we change the artifact staging directory path? Yes, you can do. I mean, you can do that instead of drop. You can say my artifacts or something like that. You can just do that. Okay. Not a problem at all. Here okay. it is. Okay. The artifact name is called uh, drop. So for example, if you see a pipeline and see the build stage out here if you look at the publish artifact stage it's telling the artifact name is drop i can say it is my artifacts it'll create a folder called my artifacts and place your artifacts in there shouldn't be a problem at all okay thank you okay let's say leave let's come around to our pipeline now this is waiting for our approval mm -hmm. good please yes, someone had a question i'm sorry So I can review, upload this out, and go into dev again. QA staging production, you can go ahead and give the respective stages uh, their own, let's say, approvals and approval groups. And this will make sure that it seeks an approval before it does the deployment. Same steps, but right now you have the entire flow, which is development, QA, staging, and production in the form of a YAML file out here right now. So this is the end to end procedure on how to create the YAML file for a CI CD pipeline structure as such. Again, we started with the basic definition of YAML. What is YAML and all these things out? Then we moved out and then we are now telling uh, what can you do with a YAML and what are the possibilities to do with the YAML. And now my entire pipeline is like a file that is sitting in my repository, which is now being version controlled. I can revert my pull request. I can do all these things. This is now a great control what I get right now with my file as such out there. But very importantly, you will have to be very careful with YAML while writing YAML. You'll have to understand what are the spaces, what are the indentations and all these things out here as such. So that's the reason I was telling. Start with a very simple telling what is YAML. See what or how do you write the YAML key value pairs and etc. And then move to the pipeline section out there. Without understanding the basics of YAML, it's going to be a little difficult for you to follow this out here as such. Yes, uh, let's check this out. Can we also use uh, validation pipelines using YAML? Yes, you can also do validation pipelines using YAML. You can simply put a validation and put a branch policy out here telling that this is a validation. Again, if you want to do that, very simple. Just go to an existing validation pipeline. Say validation, edit this out. This is all your pipeline definition right now in classic can simply go ahead export the ML out here. And if you check this out, you will have a YAML, let's say out here as such. So you have the entire YAML syntax. It's telling the variables, it's telling the name. It's telling what is the repository you have to check this out on and all that stuff. You can simply take this and put it inside your, let's say, pipeline. And you can start using this as a file. So you create a pipeline using this particular file. And you can simply start using that particular pipeline in your build, in your build policies as such, as a build validation tool. So yes, you can also do that using the YAML. Yes, any more questions here, guys? So now it's waiting for QA, the job is pending. So it's moved from development, it's moved to QA, from QA to motor stage and then production all the way. Yes, any more questions, guys? All right, then if no one has any questions, then that's it from mine today and uh, we will most likely have a session tomorrow i will inform that in the group uh, by the end of the day and we will start with terraforms from tomorrow out there thank you and have a good day ahead thanks guys